I love irony. It is my favorite song ever made. It has been for years, and I foresee it staying that way for the distant future. Every second, every beat, every frame of the song speaks to me in a way that few things have in my short life. Irony is a song about aimlessness, about pushing yourself forward without knowing why, merely drifting through life. This feeling isn't admirable, and the song doesn't give you anything to look forward to. It is simply a thorough and beautiful expression of emotion, with a subtle reminder to keep pushing forward. The following will be heavily self-indulgent and biased, but I am right, so listen and learn something. A big part of the reason why irony is the greatest is its downright masterful sense of aesthetic and visual direction. The entire PV is drawn in soft and earthy tones, focusing on greens and shades of orange and brown. The art is minimal and simple, with little detail and splotchy whole tone coloring. Irony has nothing grand to say. It's just trying to express a state of mind, and this minimal construction conveys that perfectly. Couple this with the visual direction of the PV, a sketchy style like that of a coloring book. All of this visual cohesion focuses around the young girl, whose design is just superb. Her design is a little detail garnishing it, but is nonetheless unique. The girl strikes a distinct silhouette. Her entire character is constructed through just about three colors, but it's because of this simplicity that the girl is so expressive and the emotion behind every action so clear and present. And let's talk about the vocals. The tuning is soft and breathy. Her voice isn't quite a whisper, rather it conveys an exhaustion, a reservation and a futility. When the tone of the song becomes more intense around the choruses, and especially during the key change at the end, that tone turns to a desperation, nearly a cry. All of this establishment brings us to the start of the actual song. I find it tiring to keep walking. The girl sings as she walks down a pencil line of a path that's unstable and unclear. She stops for a moment, picking her head up from the ground and looking forward only to find that this winding road is no end in sight. The camera turns to our leading lady, an empty expression on her face as a stoplight slowly changes from green to yellow to red before the girl simply falls down. The narrative through line of the piece is fairly simple. At this moment, the girl stops advancing, pondering her life until the ultimate conclusion of the song. This starts an interesting motif of the story, that being the lack of action on the part of the girl. For a large chunk of the story, she is not actively doing anything, simply being pushed along by the things she's on or otherwise standing still. As she goes on to sing about, she's merely being pulled along through life down a road that has no destination. The vocal line itself during this opener, and in fact the entire song, is swung. This coupled with the tuning keeps the sense of intimacy close. However, as the girl falls, the simple guitar chords are covered by a wild piano, with a harsh tone and rhythms all over the place. With this, the control is gone. Having stopped moving, the girl lands on a train that pulls her forward. The title of the song appears beautifully as the girl is pulled along on a circular road, not advancing. Move on to the verse and this trend continues. The voice becomes hushed again as the girl sings about thinking her situation is okay, only to realize that nothing is actually okay. Couple this with the visuals and the meaning of this goes even deeper. As the line is sung, the girl falls off the train she was riding on. That is to say, one can't simply coast through life being pulled along by something else. Transition and the girl was sitting on a hot air balloon. She sulks as she recounts the pain she's felt before. The girl notes how she knows that stewing and regret won't do anything to help her advance, but she's unable to do otherwise. She reaches for a balloon reflected in her eyes, but can't ever reach it. In resigning herself to be carried away, she loses the ability to seize the things that she desires. As the girl resigns herself further, a bird comes along and the balloon is popped. Consider the two pieces of visual metaphor we've been given so far. In both instances, the girl resigns herself and her agency, allowing something else to pull her forward, and in both cases, she's stopped by something that is out of her control. Important to note, though, is that this isn't to say that one is unable to control the adversity in their lives. Rather, this adversity comes from the fact that the girl was letting herself be carried along to begin with. If you want to achieve anything, to accomplish or to strive, you cannot allow yourself to merely coast through life. The chorus hits and the girl begins to fall from the sky. She makes excuses for her suffering, lamenting her pain and her isolation. The PV cuts to a beautiful shot of the girl lying on her back, staring up as the balloon she reached for drifts further and further away. She makes no effort anymore to reach for it, simply resigning herself once again. This brings me to perhaps my favorite thing about the song, and that's the level of awareness. 
It was touched upon earlier, but really comes to a head in the choruses. The girl is reflecting on advice and words she's been given from others, or perhaps even just contemplating with herself. She explains that she knows she should reach out for others, but can't believe in their trust. She explains how even if her hardships are mundane, she can't seem to shake them off. The final line of the first and the last choruses are simply, I don't know anymore. The girl searches for answers and thinks there were issues, but is aimless. That's really the heart of the narrative. The song is about aimlessness, but from a place of understanding. The line advances and the girl sings about this duality. Through pondering her life and how to improve things, she simply gets caught in a cycle of deprivation and overthinking. This is coupled with some of my favorite lines in music. The line is breakneck, taking few pauses as it spirals down. The girl doesn't just describe the idea of overthinking in a downward spiral. The thought continues and continues ceaselessly in the vocal. As this thought spiral goes on, the girl sees a dog walk up to her, and considers once more her conflict between how she is perceived and how she thinks of herself. Before I get to the interaction itself, it's important to put it in context. Right before the dog appears, the girl sings about wanting a way to casually disappear and back out of life. The dog asks, are you sick? To which the girl simply responds, I'm sick of hearing it. This sort of superficial concern is just tired. The hardest part of being aimless is knowing that you are in that state. The problem isn't identifying worry, but coping with it. The pain comes from not knowing the answers, rather than not knowing what the problem is. The dog vanishes before her as the girl begins to cry. The line then begins to double down even further on her resignation. Unable to name any dreams or aspirations, unable to cite a reason for her even being alive, she simply states that she doesn't want any of that anyway. This sort of mental defense prevents you from feeling loss, but also stops you from moving forward. Even so, she can't help but to reach out for the dog once more, which notably is colored the same as the balloon which she reached out for in the first verse, only to once again find it out of reach. At this point, the girl starts walking again, but she walks in the opposite direction that she had at the beginning, stopping only to cry to herself. This leads up to a fantastic visual transition. The girl cries until she is drowned by a sea, and then the scene transitions to her sitting in a boat for the chorus. And let's talk about that chorus. The chorus follows suit with our previous metaphors. The girl's deprecation fights off words of kindness people have shown her. She even goes to explain how she knows that people are shielding her with kindness how those very actions have allowed her to become complacent. Every time we fail, we crawl back to a reliable sense of comfort and acceptance. We cope with that weakness by licking our own wounds, too weak to face it head on. On the visual side of things, we once again see the girl coasting along, this time on a boat, only to fall off and into the ocean. The girl doesn't lament falling or try to fight it, simply falling limp, still in resignation. After the instrument break, that resignation that occurred in the second verse becomes all the more intense. Beyond her dreams and goals, she gives up on affection and hope, citing finally that she can never change. Suddenly the key changes and we're back at the roads and the hill from the beginning of the song. By now, the girl has completely given up, but also can't turn back on the road. I'm worn out. I've turned timid and running away would be futile. She tries to turn around and walk in the direction she came, only to find herself at an ever-approaching cliffside. Unable to do anything, she simply collapses and cries. Pulling back the camera, the girl, still facing off towards the cliff, considers the endless path before her, the stoplight from the beginning of the song still red. As this is occurring, the girl sings, What is life anyway? Not even knowing, I just keep living. But can I call that happiness? I don't know anymore. Every time that I'm just barely conscious. Every time there's an unbearable tightness in my core that I can't quite place. When I'm thinking about nothing, and that's exactly the thing that pains me. That level of melancholia is exactly what irony is. The song speaks to the desire to be happy, the search for meaning. It speaks to coping with one's own feelings, placing them against those of others. It's beautiful amidst its agony, layered with meaning. I want to be clear though, Sulking and crying about your problems may be cathartic, but it is in no way progressive. The girl in this video laments her uselessness and her lack. The song, however, wants you to know that you have to move forward on your own two feet. At the end, the girl turns around again to look at the road before her. She sees the dog once again standing in front of her, staring at her. In the final moments of the song, the girl, amongst these realizations that she isn't happy living this way, screams out in a moment of desperation. 
the light on the stoplight turns green. The girl will keep moving forward, for she must. Pushed to the brink, Irony understands the pain that comes with stagnation and inability. It laments over the search for meaning and comprehension, but doesn't settle with whining and crying. If we want to achieve anything, if we want that meaning we claim to chase, we have to walk towards it on our own two feet. Each listen to Irony is a journey. The song is only about four minutes long, but feels like a full-length film because of its compositional complexity and the power of its tone and message. Everyone should listen to this song. But when you do, you shouldn't just see it as sad, taking that sentiment at face value and talking about how relatable it is. You need to take the message to heart and realize that the things you desire, the life you want, can only be acquired if you continue to work for it. Continue to walk on that tired road even so. That is ultimately the message of irony. That is the meaning behind the greatest song ever written. Thank you.